in today's video, I'm gonna post a clip of Kamala Harris, you know, doing her campaigning for president, but I want you to take heed to how she is campaigning in order to get the black vote. Let's talk about it. Praise to the Most High Yah Shalom. Thank you for tuning in to another Righteous Spiritful episode. Today I'm back at it in them trenches handling that kingdom business. Man, I've constantly said, you know, black people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. We don't test anything. And as a people, we are very naive to the strategy and tactics of Hasatan, okay? So I'm gonna post a clip in here at the end of this where Kamala Harris, who has fooled a lot of black people into thinking she's black, is not black. So I'll educate you, okay? See, the part of the story where they have people thinking that she's black is because her father is from Jamaica. Listen to what I'm saying. Jamaica is a country, just like America is a country, okay? Within America, there are a lot of different uh, races, ethnicities, and nationalities. But what you will find out is Kamala Harris is Irish and Indian, not Native American. I know some some black people, you say Indian and they automatically think Native American. No, I'm talking about from India, okay? And father Irish, mother Indian, from India, okay? The religion of her family is Hinduism. Listen to what I'm saying. That is a religion rooted in idolatry. So outside of whatever you think she's going to do for you, I'm here to tell you she's trying to get your vote and then you have black people thinking once again, just like they did with, with President Obama, you know, that they're going to be the savior. It is making history more important than putting yourself into further bondage. But, you know, let's stick with the facts. The facts are, who did she get in Atlanta to come out and campaign? Who did she get to come out there and shake her ass? Megan Thee Stallion, Migos. What do these two people do that positively represents black culture? Not a damn thing. But if you wanna get the black vote, play some ratchet music, shake some ass, and you look, people fell for that hook, line, and sinker. Not realizing, man, you don't even realize the narrative that the elites, you know, have, have pretty much strategized because Kamala Harris has already been on record saying that she is not black, saying that she has no ties to uh, the ethnic groups that make up black, the black race. She's came out and said that. But once again, black people take the bait, hook, line, and sinker, not realizing, not realizing I can guarantee you she is going to probably put us further in the hole just like President Obama did instead of trying to get American people out of the hole. I don't care about all this. You know, if black people would stop focusing on Kamala Harris, Obama, who was black and who ain't, and focus on, okay, who's coming straight up the middle with that biblical truth? If black people would focus on uh, Deuteronomy 28 and making sure that you are in the front half of that chapter, we'd be all right. But because of this niggerdom, 
that consistently goes on, that's why we're destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Enemy doesn't have to strategize too hard uh, to get us. Easily deceived. No self-autonomy. Don't exercise critical thinking. Take any bait that they're throwing out. Kamala Harris is not going to uh, cause prices to go down the same way. Like she's not going to uh, flatline this, this uh, uh, outraged economy. She ain't going to do that. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. But you can look how she can play as a chameleon and strategically, you know, it's been a strategy. A lot of black people don't know that you have uh, other races that go to HBCUs. If you've never stepped foot on an HBCU campus, then you wouldn't know that. But you got to look at HBCUs. They have to allow other people because they take government funding. So Kamala Harris is one of those people. And when you look up what race Indian falls up under, it falls up under Asian. Listen to what I'm saying. Falls up under Asian. The religion that she practiced is Hinduism. Rooted in all kind of abominations, transgressions, idolatry. I guarantee you, she will set a snare for that ass. Close to the Yah Ministries kicking that thing, gun barrel straight. Bow. Make some noise for Mr. Harris, our future president. Let's get this done, Atlanta. Come over here and talk to y'all. Because the real savage is going to get out there and vote. I'm a savage. Better too nasty. I couldn't be more excited to welcome a fellow HBCU alum back to the beautiful city of Atlanta. So it's only right in the birthplace of the culture. It's also the same place to launch the first African-American woman to run for president. You got the same agenda. You run to Atlanta when you need a check balance. Let me break it down for you. This the real challenge. <laughs> oh, it's good to be back in Georgia. <laughs> and please give it up for Quavo <laughs> and Megan. What Quavo said, you can be from Northside. If y'all don't know me, I go by the name of Quavo. Born. Born and raised in the north side of Atlanta, home of the Migos. You run to Atlanta when you need a few dollars. No, you're not a colleague, you're a f colonizer. <laughs> <laughs> it's official. Kamala Harris is trying to be a city girl president, promoting black women popping their thought pockets, having sloppy, questionable relations without protection, then telling them to go down to the clinic to get rid of their black American babies. The VP went to Atlanta, messing up already tow up traffic, where she turned the GSU Convocation Center to Magic City. For some of you wondering why is Meg Thee Stallion there? Well, she had to invite Meg Thee Stallion to offer a free concert in order to fill up the building. A lot of the girls, they come past on that free hot girl summer concert. So yeah, a bunch of Meg Thee Stallion fans showed up, aka the hotties, Crazy though, because after Meg performed, folks who only came there for Meg and had no shame showing it, they started leaving the building. Kamala the cosplaying chameleon, she had to call up some black Americans and have them acknowledge her as the first black this and that to get us to connect with her and her identity switching without asking what she was going to do for black Americans in exchange for our vote she's asking for. The same strategy they always come to us with that a lot of us are getting tired of. One person said this shows a level of desperation for a vote 
This woman right here said, I hate how they pander to black people for votes. They really think we dumb shaking my head. Another woman said, nobody takes America seriously. This comment here, is this a humiliation ritual or some? Cause huh? Another woman, she also thought it was distasteful. Obviously a Meg the Stallion fan. She said, I love me some Tina Snow, but this was neither the time nor the place. So even though she's a fan, she's like, hey, this was out of order. And let me tell you, I saw a bunch of people commenting and most of them did not like this. In general, it rubbed black people the wrong way. And let me tell you why. Will Kamala go to the Indian people from India, the AAPI community, having their women doing all this? Just sitting up there with this rap concert and no explanation of policy and the agenda for those people? Will she do that to them? Like I'm saying though, is she going to the illegal immigrants with Meg the Stallion or whoever popping their thought pocket? Or is she showing up telling them what she's going to do for them? Just like I told you about the disgusting agenda they had at the BET Awards show last month, you can put two and two together and see what's going on here. It's very embarrassing, definitely out of order. I saw one person in the comments taking up for this foolishness, saying something like we will be mad if it was Taylor Swift. Like, stop it. Stop acting like the only artist in the country that could have been tapped for this rally is the leader of the twerk team. Like there's no other decent black artist with decent music. I remember 16 years ago, Obama would play Stevie Wonder or something that was good for that generation at the time. But you cannot tell me there's no new school artist or at least mid school that can't perform without doing all of this. And honestly, they didn't need a performance at all. But I guess when you don't have a platform to run on or a real grassroots base, you have to manufacture support by having Meg the Stallion throw a free concert. If you weren't trying to rock people to sleep and you actually had tangibles for black American votes, you wouldn't have to play these kind of stupid games to get our attention. Where's the agenda, Kamala? And then let me tell you another thing I noticed. Kamala, the cosplaying chameleon, on her plane ride down from DC, she all of a sudden picked up this Southern accent. The path to the White House runs right through this state. <laughs> And you all helped us win in 2020, and we're going to do it again in 2024. Like, I know you're Indian. Your dad was born in Jamaica. She was raised a significant amount of years in Canada. I get her background is all over the place. But why did she put on this fake Southern accent when she came to Georgia? And you all helped us win in 2020, and we're going to do it again in 2024. <laughs> <laughs> And you wonder why I call her Kamala the Cosplay and Chameleon. This is why. It's very insulting. This lady is not a black American woman. And you have some people saying, what does it matter when they've been telling us for the last two weeks, oh, vote for her because she's us or having all these black women sending us all these text messages and telling us how we have to support her as the first black American woman, this and that. We are about to make history. But I'm telling you right now, everybody's not playing crazy. A lot of black people see what's going on. The Democrats are definitely trying to run the same game they played on us with Obama in 2008, 2012, Hillary in 2016 and 2020 with Biden. Every time I see Kamala now, it's giving Hillary 2.0 mixed with Obama 2.0 times 10. You got Meg the Stallion, the leader of the twerk team, Quavo still yelling Northside, which is also crazy. Lawrenceville is not Northside Atlanta. Lawrenceville is Lawrenceville. Born and raised in the north side of Atlanta, home of the Migos. It's not Atlanta. Look, the north is not Atlanta. No. The south is not Atlanta. No. You <laughs> is not Atlanta. No. You <laughs> is not Atlanta. But you have her making us look like this on a national stage because she has no real connection to black America. She could care less how she's pretending to be a black American woman and throwing these 304 themed campaign rallies. Of course, she doesn't care because she's not like us. 2024, you got the same agenda. You run to Atlanta when you need a check balance. Let me break it down for you. This the real challenge. Will she do this for the Indian AAPI crowd? Or is she only playing this with black people in Atlanta? 